So I have these cool belt buckles that I'm going to use for inspiration to create a really cool Father's Day present. I want to make him a belt buckle. Here I designed something for my dad. This is the year he was born, but I think it was just a little ambitious. So I'm going to go with something a little bit straightforward, just his initials. And uh, these are the buckles for size reference. So I'm just going to cut out the letters for a template and uh, use them as a guide. This tedious work pays off in the long run, but it is, uh, it is tedious. Now that I have my letters cut out, I'm going to spray mount them down to this regular half inch packing foam. I'm going to use my hot wire foam cutter that I uh, built a while ago. You can check out that video. Uh, it's one of my older videos, but it works really well. And what's great about it is that it'll cut through the foam no problem, but the paper acts like a guide and stops the wire, and you get these nice, perfect cutouts. So here I'm slicing down the letters. They're just a little bit too thick, and I'm using a board just as a as a fence. So this black border I want raised at the same height as the letters. So what I'm gonna do I'm gonna cut the pattern in half and disassemble my wire for the hot wire foam cutter. Here I am poking a hole through my form and passing the hot wire through. And now I can sort of cut out the interior and have this nice raised border. So here are the pieces for the belt buckle and next step is to hot glue them together. Hot glue on foam works really well. So I attached what we call the sprue and I also added a couple pieces of foam on the back which would be used for the latch and the belt loop. All right, well, my patterns are made, if you can see it. And in case that one fails, I made a backup. This one's a little bit simpler. If I have time, I'll try to cast this paperweight for my father-in-law. His uh, initials are NW. So I'm about to set up, and soon we'll be making metal. It's going to be fun. So in my last casting video, I had mentioned that I was getting nervous sticking my arm in the foundry to light it. And I got a few suggestions on uh, why not toss a lip piece of newspaper in it instead, and I did, and I like this new procedure. I always like to preheat my crucible when it hasn't been used in a while just to drive out any moisture. And here it is looking right down the burner, right into the furnace. So I'm using technique, obviously lost foam casting, and what you do is you bury your foam in sand to hold its shape when you pour the aluminum in. Just got to make sure it's all packed in fairly tight. Here's my, uh, my second one. You can see I'm patting it in, making sure uh, all the gaps are filled with sand. And this is all my scrap that I'm gonna be using. And it takes a while. I think in this project I might have used uh, close to 200 cans. You do get a lot of impurities when you melt aluminum cans. This is what we call dross that I'm skimming off. You can see in that lower right hand corner in that pan how much uh, dross was pulled out of the, my crucible. So if you're not familiar with lost foam, when you pour the aluminum in, the aluminum will instantaneously vaporize the foam form that's buried in the sand and take the place of it. Pretty cool. It's also pretty stinky. And any leftover aluminum I just pour in this little mini muffin pan. So now I'm going to try casting the paperweight. And I used up all my aluminum cans, so I had to start using some bits of scrap. But I managed to get another full crucible. <laughs> I 
and I do get a few more aluminum mini muffin ingots. Hopefully we had a good pour, so just give me a little bit uh, to straighten everything up, let these cool down, and we'll pull them out of the sand, and hopefully we got uh, some good casts. So even after waiting like 45 minutes, these things are still super hot. So a quick dunk in water helps cool them off pretty quickly. So let's do a recap. Uh, here's the first one. This is the preferred belt buckle. It came out really well, a little crooked. I want to see if I can straighten it out, but this is the one that I would love to use because it has the most character. I do have my backup plain side, but still would be really cool. This paperweight, this came out great. This is a hunking piece of aluminum, nice and thick. The finish is really smooth, so honestly, I think just cutting the, the sprue off and a little bit of uh, wire brushing, and this one's good to go. I'm happy. It's lost foam. I'm doing it in my backyard. It's pretty cool. Is it a belt buckle or did I just cast a piston? So I'm gonna use this old wrench that has no teeth to mar the aluminum to try and persuade it into alignment, which uh, worked out really well. It's pretty, it's pretty straight. I'm gonna go with it. Looks pretty cool. I do want to finish it up a little so I have a lot of sanding to do. Here I am trying to blend in where I cut the sprue off. Get a little bit of texture. So I need to make the loop where the belt passes through. And I took some measurements. And I'm just going to do my best just to bend it by hand. Kind of a little bit of, bit, little bit of eyeballing. And that seems to work pretty well. So I'm going to add a little bit of color. Here's a Rust-Oleum brown paint. And when I first paint it, it's nice and glossy. It looks like a chocolate bar. So after a lot of sanding, all the paint's removed on high spots and I get this sort of grungy look. And I think that's pretty cool. So for the buckle latch, I thought I would just weld a little nub on a nail and file it down, but that really didn't work out too well. So I did find a nice small screw that was the same diameter. So I decided just to drill and screw it in. And everything was fine until the screw snapped. So now that piece is stuck in there. So my solution, I got a beefier screw. I filed the, the head down. And since the screw is steel, it cut its own threads in the hole that I drilled for it. And there we go. There's the belt buckle. And here's the belt I bought. It's a brand new belt, but it has an old vintage look to it. It's brown. That's why I spray painted the buckle brown. And there we go, a test fit for my dad. That is a nice belt buckle. All right, let's do a summary. Got one really cool belt buckle for my dad. One super awesome paperweight for my father-in-law. And uh, this puppy is not going to be used but my son's initials are LG as well, so I'll repurpose this something cool for him. So there you go, a little backyard foundry. It's a lot of fun. I highly recommend it if you haven't done it before. Do it. Just be safe. Don't blame me if you catch yourself on fire. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm going to wrap this up. Thanks for sticking around, guys, and I am signing off. Evil Twin X. Later, guys.